A few days ago, I woke up with a sharp pain in my eye. I could barely focus on anything. After forcing myself through my morning routine, I ended up calling a cab and heading over to the doctor's office. After sitting in the waiting room for an inordinate amount of time, I was called back and the nurse ran some tests. While I was waiting in the examination room, I noticed my vision getting blurry and called out for a nurse, but no one came. I cannot tell you how long I was in there, but with the pain getting worse by the second, each moment seemed like an hour. I couldn't tell you when the doctor came in. I passed out at somewhere along the way. I vaguely remember being loaded onto a gurney, but aside from that, my mind is blank. I woke up the next day on a critical care unit. I was hooked into all these machines and I had tubes coming out of my nose and mouth. It was very uncomfortable, but not nearly as bad as my eye. I couldn't see out of it. In fact, I could barely see out of my good eye. I tried to reach up and grab my eye and it was about that time I noticed the leather restraints attached to my wrists. I sat there in the dimly lit hospital room for much longer than I cared for. My screams were muffled by the tubes in my mouth. When a nurse finally peeked in to check on me, it was all I could do to struggle and make muffled whimpers. She didn't even take notice of me. After changing out of my sailing bag and making a scribble on a clipboard, she went back into the hall and closed the door. As the light began to fade from what was left of my good eye, I started to wonder if I was dying. No such luck. The pain continued. I could still hear the beeps and hums of the machines that had been hooked into me, and I could feel all the sensors and tubes that had been attached or inserted into my body. Being unable to see sent me into a frenzy. I writhed against the restraints until I felt one of my hands break loose. I ripped the tubes out of my mouth and let out a short scream that turned into a coughing fit. After prying my other hand loose, I clumsily stood up and felt my way through the dark until I found what felt like a door and pulled at it until it came open. I felt a firm hand on my shoulder which was accompanied by a male voice telling me to calm down and go back to bed. I wasn't having it. I had to get out of there. I felt the hand tighten its grip on my shoulder and I started flailing my arms in his direction until I broke free, at which point I kept one hand on the wall and tried to move as quickly as I could down the hall. Several orderlies tackled me to the ground and one of the last things I remember is getting a shot in my hip. For a moment, there was nothing. I couldn't see, feel, hear, or smell anything. I guess I was asleep, but for the first time in two hellish days, there was no pain. When I woke, my hands were again in restraints. My eye wasn't hurting anymore and I could make out slivers of light from what I could only assume was a bandage over my good eye. I didn't feel anything in my bad eye. Nothing. I called out for help and was again reminded of the feeding tube. I started struggling again, hoping to break free but was met with a familiar firm hand on my shoulder. The bandage was pulled from my good eye and my doctor was standing over me with a somber look on his face. So, good news and bad news. The good news is we were able to save your right eye. It seems that some of the eggs had been able to make it to that eye, but we were able to clear it up pretty quickly. The bad news is that we had to remove your left eye. By the time you came into primary care, the eggs had already hatched and the larva had already started eating your eye. He tried to keep a straight face as he described it, but I could tell he was just as disgusted as I was. He pulled a feeding tube and got me a small cup of water before asking, So, any questions? Two things, I said, as I tried to compose myself. 
Why am I in restraints? And what do you mean, eggs? My voice was as panicked as it was loud. The doctor shook his head and then said, There were several times throughout the night where you tried to claw out your own eye or pull out the feeding tube. It was for your own safety. He paused and said, Have you been to South America recently or been in contact with someone who has? No, I said, shaking my head. He continued, did you order eye drops or contacts on the internet? Getting frustrated with his hesitation, I finally grunted out, Answer the damn question! He looked at the floor for a second and said, Calm down, we're just trying to figure out where you got exposed to the insects. Insects? What the hell? I interrupted. After a few seconds of shouting and cursing, I calmed down enough to hear him say, Yeah, we identified it as an insect native to Brazil. It bites the eye and lays eggs in the soft tissue. The larvae hatch and burrow deep into the eye. After eating the eye, the insects burst out of the socket and fly off to infect other hosts. It's actually pretty rare for them to infect humans. What the hell, Doc? I said as I felt a tear coming out of my remaining eye. After another day of observation and being given cleaning instructions for the empty socket and some pain pills, the hospital sent me home. By the time I got back to my apartment, the entire building had been sealed off in plastic. I called a number that had been posted next to the gate and a woman claiming to be from the CDC told me to wait there and that a car would be by. No one would give me any answers, but they put me up in a decent hotel and told me they would help me find a new apartment. More than anything, I just wished they would tell me what they did with my cat. I hadn't seen Mr. Boot since a couple days before my eyes started hurting. He was making some weird noises that day. <laughs>